Hey everybody, in this video I am going to discuss Robertsonian translocations. Okay, so Robertsonian translocations, they are a special case of reciprocal translocations. They involve, oh they occur between acrocentric chromosomes. So, okay, what happens in an in a Robertsonian translocation. Let's take a look at this diagram here. We see two non-homologous chromosomes, one blue, one orange. Uh, they're both acrocentric chromosomes. They have very small P arms and long Q arms. And in a Robertsonian translocation, essentially what we're going to do is we, we need at least two breaks, a break in each chromosome. So we have a break here and a break here. And what that allows for, it allows these little pieces here to be fused together and these right here to be fused together. So the long arms are fused to make one chromosome and the short arms are fused to make another chromosome. So here are the translocated chromosomes over here. We have the long arms fused together in the short arms fused together, right? Okay. So turns out that this one right here, this very small chromosome, which is comprised of the two short arms of the normal chromosomes, this is often lost. This is often lost. And why is it lost? I, I'm not really sure. You know, it has a centromere. So why is it lost? I'm not really sure um, about that. And it would make an interesting study if, if uh, that study has not been performed yet. And the reason we are talking about Robertsonian translocations is because they are important in uh, a certain type of Down syndrome called familial, familial Down syndrome. So 95% of cases of Down syndrome, this is where individuals have uh, an extra copy of chromosome 21 sequences. So maybe not a whole copy of chromosome 21, but maybe just uh, most of it, as we're going to see in uh, the case of a Robertsonian translocation involving chromosome 21. So 5% of Down syndrome cases are caused uh, by a Robertsonian or related to a Robertsonian translocation. 95% are thought to be be uh, de novo cases, where, which we are going to talk about in uh, the next video. So, but with this one, we're talking about familial Down syndrome, which is a form of Down syndrome that can run in families. So it's not spontaneous. So to understand what's going on here, let's look at the left. So. Let's say this is the genotype of a normal individual without any translocations involving chromosome 14 and chromosome 21. Now chromosome 14 is an acrocentric chromosome and chromosome 21 is an acrocentric chromosome. And you know, these chromosomes, what they have on the Q arms, we'll talk more about this later, but what they have is our DNA genes. Now we have many other locations, uh, well, I should say uh, a few, other locations in the genome have these rDNA genes. So it turns out that, you know, individuals can lose these arms, these short arms, with a Robertsonian translocation and have a normal phenotype and be just, just fine. So let's say this is the normal genotype of a, a normal human without any translocations involving these two translocation chromo uh, these acrocentric chromosomes so diploid right so we have two of each chromosome uh, i have these segments labeled a b c and d so these aren't official uh, designations of these segments i'm just labeling them for uh, reference purposes and over here let's say we have m n o and p okay now okay this is a normal individual we'd expect meiosis to occur normally normal gametes with a normal complement 
a uh, single set of chromosomes in each gamete. So over here, what we have is the genotype of a translocation carrier. So the phenotype of this person is normal. This person should not have Down syndrome uh, from what we can tell, but looking at this genotype, we don't expect there to be anything abnormal with uh, this person's phenotype. Uh, however, we, we see something weird going on, right? Okay, we have a single copy of chromosome 14, a single copy of chromosome 21, and we have the Robertsonian translocation chromosome. And notice that the small one, the small one that you know resulted from the fusion of the uh, Q arms, or the P arms, I'm sorry, of chromosome 14 and chromosome 21 are lost, and this is very common. So we call this person a translocation carrier because they have the translocation chromosomes, but they don't show any phenotypic effects of having this, this chromosome. Uh, so what are they missing? This person would be deficient for segments M and A, and those, again, are the small arms of chromosome 14 and chromosome 21. So they're missing A chromosome, they're missing segment one segment A and one segment M. They do have one of each on the normal chromosomes, but uh, the phenotype is, is normal, even though they're lacking those uh, one of each of those segments. But they have also two Ds, two Cs, two Bs, two Ps, two Os, and two Ns. Okay, so, so uh, that's why the phenotype is, is relatively normal. Not relatively normal, is normal is this person has all of the genetic information needed to be a healthy individual. However, during uh, meiosis, we can get the formation of abnormal gametes, and some of those gametes can lead to uh, some of the offspring of the translocation carrier inheriting Down syndrome. So let's take a look at what would happen during in the meiotic cells of the translocation carrier. So again, here are the chromosomes in the translocation carrier. We have chromosome 14, chromosome 21, and the Robertsonian translocation chromosome. Now 14, here's chromosome 14, is going to have to pair with those sequences during meiosis. And chromosome 21 right here, the long arm, is going to have to pair with that one right there. So there's no pairing partners for these, and that doesn't seem to be, be a problem. So let's look at how the pairing could occur. We could get something like this. OK, so, so a structure like this would maximize uh, pairing between the similar sequences of these these three chromosomes here. So now we'd expect these to attach to the spindle and move to the metaphase plate during meiosis one. And these can segregate in a number of ways, right? So first, this chromosome, the way I've diagrammed these, we can see that these blue centromeres here with the blue on each side, these are these are chromosome, these centromeres were derived from chromosome 14. Let's check that. Okay, we can see chromosome 14 centromeres, blue on each side. Okay, so this is a chromosome 14 centromere. Okay, so those are going to segregate most of the time, unless something weird happens. Those are going to segregate away from each other during meiosis 1. However, this one up here, this is a chromosome 21 centromere. It's either going to go this way or it's going to go that way. And depending on which way it goes, let's say to the left or to the right, we're going to get gametes with, with different sets of chromosomes in different states of, of being balanced and unbalanced. OK, let's see. Let's take the situation where the centromere goes that way. So, so we have segregation of the chromosome 14 centromeres. So the normal chromosome 14 is going to the left. And the translocation chromosome with the uh, 
centromere for chromosome 14 and the sequences from chromosome 21 moving to the right. And we have the normal chromosome 21 moving to the left. If we follow those chromosomes all the way through meiosis 2 and see the products, we're going to get something like this. So these gametes down here are going to be produced. Now these are identical. We can see that we have a normal copy of chromosome 14 and a normal copy of chromosome 21 in each gamete. So this is identical over here. So this is normal. So if either of these gametes, let's say this is spermatogenesis, either of those gametes fertilized a normal secondary oocyte, OK, we'd expect the, the zygote to be normal, to have a normal genotype. Um, let's see, the secondary oocyte is going to provide chromosome 14 and a chromosome 21. If, if this, say, uh, sperm spermatozoon is used to fertilize the secondary oocyte and then okay so what we have two copies of 14 two copies of 21 we expect normal um, a normal genotype there so same thing with this even though these two gametes are both inheriting the robertsonian translocation chromosome containing chromosome 14 and 21 sequences if this spermatozoon here should fertilize a normal secondary oocyte, what is the zygote going to have? It's going to have two copies of chromosome 14, one, two, well, a copy of normal chromosome 14 and another copy of uh, the sequences, most of the sequences on 14, so that's two right there, a copy of all the important sequences on chromosome 21, and a normal chromosome 21. So essentially, this, this zygote is going to be diploid for all these key sequences. And this is going to be a normal. So essentially, this is going to be a translocation carrier. If we're, exp if we're, if we're assuming that, uh, no, OK. So this is going to result in a translocation carrier if this spermatozoon here fertilizes a normal secondary oocyte. Same thing for this one. This is a genetically this is a genetically identical spermatozoon. Okay, so so if segregation occurs like this, then in all the cases we have offspring being born uh, without Down syndrome, with normal phenotypes. Now, however, if segregation works like this down here, where we have the normal chromosome 14 moving to the left the translocation chromosome moving to the right, along with this normal copy of chromosome 21, well, we're going to see something different. Let's take the situation over here first. So 14 moves alone without any copies of chromosome 21 sequences. If we follow this all the way through meiosis, what we see is, if we're talking about spermatogenesis again, what we see is uh, the uh, spermatozoons, or I'm just going to call them sperm from now on, uh, the sperm, what they say is, is they have a copy of all the chromosomes except except for 21, right? We only have 14 diagrammed here. We, we're only looking at 14 and 21 specifically, but what we're seeing is they lack 21. So this one lacks 21, this one lacks 21, and if these should be used in fertilization, if one of these should be used in fertilization to make the zygote, well, that zygote is going to lack a copy of 21. And uh, zygotes that only have one copy of 21, in this case, that one copy would come from the, the secondary oocyte, uh, they are inviable. So these are essentially uh, non-functional gametes. They do not lead to viable zygotes. It's thought they do not lead to viable zygotes. So this over here, though, if one of these gametes is used to fertilize the second, a normal secondary oocyte, well, that normal secondary oocyte is going to have a copy of chromosome 14 and a copy of chromosome 21. And so what does that give us? Well, that gives us two copies of the chromosome 14 sequences, but three copies, one, two, 
three of the chromosome 21 sequences. So these gametes over here, if they are used to fertilize a normal secondary oocyte, uh, the offspring would be expected to have Down syndrome. OK, well, I hope that makes sense. Um, so that's essentially how f familial Down syndrome works. Uh, translocation carriers form some gametes that look like this. And if these gametes are used for fertilization or in the fertilization process, it can produce a uh, zygote with an extra copy of chromosome 21 sequences. And uh, that is the basis of Down syndrome.